G'day, Steve here with... <laughs> I've, I've been looking for Western Red Cedar and I nearly said, G'day, Steve here, Western Red Cedar. No, G'day, Steve here, woodworking musk. I said, both start with a wobble here, so there you go. Ah, oh, I've got some things I've got to do and put together and I thought, well, I might as well do a stream. And I've just noticed one of my cameras is unplugged, so let me... Let's come over here and plug this in. Should be working all right now. I'm going to turn it off. And I turn it on again. And it should be there. I hope everyone's doing well. I haven't been streaming lately, but I've been very busy. And I thought oh, I've got some glue ups to do. I might as well do a stream and share it with you and we can catch up on what everyone else has been doing. And if you can't sleep, watch me, I'll put you to sleep. Um, and if you've got any questions about woodwork, by all means, chime in the chat room and um, we, uh, we will attempt to answer them. I'm just seeing if I'm actually live here and if I am, that's going to be a good thing. It takes a while. I don't know what the lag is, but it, sometimes it's up to three minutes. So bear with me until I get this online. Yep, crap internet service again. Thank you, Telstra. For wonderful non-service that you give. <clears throat> they really are. And then they, they, they got the audacity to send you a questionnaire. Are you happy? Tell us how we did. Are we delivering a good service? No, you're not. It's a rotten service. And every time I ring up, I get put on hold. And then I get some person on the other end has got no flipping idea. And they tell me to go to somewhere else. Well, how about I don't pay you? How would that be? Oh dear, oh dear. All right, I think we might be live there, so let me, here we go, live. Oh, that's good. Um, let me turn my volume down because I don't want to listen to myself really. There you go. And we'll get out of that. And we got live chat. Look, g'day Jared, g'day Vince, g'day Andy. Who was it? G'day T-Bone. Good day, Jared. Jared, you got two comments in. Uh, yes, audio is working. Yay, good. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So, I've got some um, sound boxes to put together. I've got something else to do on another harp here. I'll show you this one. This, this one is going to be speckletacular. Oh, let me, let me have a look at this. There you go. This is, I'm going to call this one Black Lightning. And it is just, move that over there. I think, anyway, I think it's going to be absolutely stunning. It's got all that. Lichtenberg burning on it. And as a disclaimer, I'm using a machine that was purpose built for me. It is safe. It operates at 30 milliamps, and do not try doing that using homemade gear. It's not worth it, it will kill you. But the stuff I've got, I had made by a, a chap in America, and yeah, it's safe. But it's gonna look absolutely extraordinary, I think, when it's finished. This is a, a sound box to it. Actually, I might even notch this in today to Let's see if we can go in here and see. Here you go. That's the sound box. Didn't do anything on the back because you don't see the back. So when this goes together, that's got to be cleaned up. And then that'll go in there and that'll go over the top of that. And that will be that. Got a little bit more adjustments to do and then my 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 goodness my logo which is the sk will go in there like that and on the other side i've still got a bit of cleaning up to do but that will have brass inlay work fitted there. So, might do a little bit on that today. I'm working on the Harlequin harp, 
um, if those that have watched me do that in the last few weeks, <laughs> I've lost it. How do you lose something that big? Where is the flipping thing? I'll find it in a minute. That's what I've got to put the soundboard on. How do you lose something that big in this workshop? Anything is possible. Bear with me. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> I've, I've done well. I've lost <laughs> half a harp. How do you do that? Anyway. Well, that's what I want. Oh, there it is. Is that it? No. Bear with me. You can tell. You can tell this stuff's live. Because I lose stuff in real time. Anyway, it'll turn up, I'm sure. Which is a nuisance. Because I'm working on it. Anyway, what I've got to do is put this together here. Oh, let's go there. All right. That's, that's just fascinated me, that is. Fascinated me. How can you lose? Oh, there, no. That's a different one. That's there, that's there. That's there, that's there. Honestly, how can you lose something that big? Well, obviously it's not hard because I've done it. I had it over here because I was, I was trying to do some routering on it and it wouldn't do what I wanted it to do. So I thought, oh, well, I'll do that later. But anyway, take my word for the Harlequin harp is going to look spectacular when I find it and then when I finish it. Okay, well, let's put this together anyway. What is going on? Um, <laughs> now, what you got to do? You got to do a Ben Franklin, Andy. You got to wait until a storm, and then you got to stand outside with a kite and harp on the other end. And if you're lucky, you get that effect. <laughs> G'day, Lawrence. How are you? What have we got here? Audio's working. Welcome to the live chat. Vince, good day. Did I say good day to Vince? I did already. Oh, I'm sorry. Doesn't matter. You can have an extra good day because it's a Tuesday. Um, Scott, good day from Kansas City. Well, good day back from you from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. That has flummoxed me. I don't know where I've put it. Anyhow, let me have a drink of coffee. That might help. I doubt it, but we'll give it a shot. Mm. I must admit, a lot of people will call me a heretic because I do love coffee flavours and I've run out and I'm waiting for another delivery today and don't quite enjoy it without just that hint of butterscotch in it, but it's good. Okay, Andy, carrier pigeon is better than your service. Yeah, you got that right. And you can eat a carrier pigeon. It doesn't do its job, but you can't do that with a telco. That has got me... I honestly don't know. Where would I have put it? I don't know. Anyway, I'll move on. Uh, what have we got? Hey, Steve. Oh, oh that's the evidence. G'day, Cam. How are you? Oh, sorry, that was rude, wasn't it? G'day, Cam. G'day, Ray. I tell you what, Cam, I've got, I think I've got four pairs of glasses. Yeah, I've got four, four pairs of glasses and they all look the same. One's for watching TV, one's for walking around, these ones I've got on here. One's for uh, reasonably close work and then the other one's real Coke bottle thick and it's for close, close work. And if I've got the wrong ones on when I walk outside, yeah, no, it's not good. Furniture done right. 
just set 10 seconds back, so not live. What? It is live. Ask me a question and I'll answer it. Uh... School holiday. The little munchkins are going back to school. I've got no kids in the house. They've all gone to school on a tech or whatever. And I thought, yeah, it'd be good internet. No, it must be just a crappy service all the way around. Mm. Okay, so that's just about caught me up with that. So I'll glue this one together. I don't know how close I am, but we will see. What I had to do here was this way. This was an interesting joint because it's got a slope on it from top to bottom and back to front. So the back to front one's not too bad, but top to bottom, I had to put an angle dado in there. And what I did, I did that using a dado blade on a saw bench, but yeah, you had to think when you do it, because I had two shots and I did it the wrong way. So it was, going that way instead of that way. But anyway, I've done it now and it's all good. Now that goes to the front, that goes to the back, so that does that. This timber, by the way, with that lovely white in it, is uh, Queensland Walnut, and the white is the sapwood. Okay, so that's gonna go there, and this one here, that was a, Engineering nightmare to do that too, but if you've got the right gear, it's okay. It was just a pain. But I've done a few of them now, so I'm, I'm getting, getting used to them. I won't say getting good at them, but I'll say getting used to them. Okay. So that is how it's meant to go together. And to get this right, you have to have the same angle at the bottom here and on here, or else it won't close properly. Uh, that angle I use is seven degrees. Alrighty, let's do a glue up. I'll use um, Tight Bond Original because it goes off nice and quick and something that's got weird angles on it. I prefer it if the glue goes off quick. There we go, we'll do that. Um, that way there's less chance of slippage and getting out of whack. Uh, the downside is, of course, you've got to be pretty quick larruping all the glue on or else the glue goes off before you're ready to put it all together. What I'm gonna do with this, I'm actually gonna screw it as well. So I'm, I don't know if you can see, if I move this, this, and this, and this, and we'll put that on. Uh, you see I've got screw holes already pre-drilled there and countersunk. I would like, the screws are like about 35 mil. These are only 30, but it will do the job. What I did to compensate for that, I've kind of sunk it a lot deeper. That gives me more meat for the screw to go into in the sides.
Got a lump of rubbish there I don't really want. good as it should but it's tight on the back so okay now this one here we'll glue it up what have we got? Ray, a three glasses, two of motors. I, I had a shot at transitional lenses once. No, don't like them. Try with transitionals and bifocals. And for this little black duck, it's much easier to change glasses. Mind you, it is a nuisance because you're in the in the um, car and you've got prescription sunglasses on. You've taken your readers off. Then you get out of the car with your sunglasses on. You get inside, turn the computer on. Then you realise you've left your readers in the car. So then you've got to get up and go out. And, oh, dear. Anyway. Hey, if life's problems were that as bad as that, you'd have a pretty good life, wouldn't you, really? When all things considered. Hang on. Still wipe under the bench. I did that on someone's workbench once and they, oh, they just lost it big time. There's history on that bench. Okay. So, it's got to go here like that. And that is a pretty... Good fit, even if I say so myself. Now, I just somehow or other clamp that up. I don't know how. Down here, and put that in there, and that can go like that. That might work all right. Okay. What I'm doing, here, okay, I'm using cork blocks here because it's going to compress and I can still just do the clamp up like I normally would. And the other way is you've got to make wedges up. And they have a habit of moving on you. Whereas doing it this way gives me that tension I want. Yeah, I might just, where's a long one? Here's a long one. got a twist in it or I've got something wrong.
There you go. Oh, there we go. So we've got no rock going that way. We've got rock going that way. Why? Might have to do some. And now it's the bottom of this clamp. is causing a bit of... Yeah. Get another cork block. There you go. That's better. Okay. Let's clean that out. And we can move on to the next disaster. It's always good to do as much of a glue clean up as you can when the glue's wet. It's actually got bicarb soda on it, so I don't really want that. And as I've mentioned many, many times before, if you're going to get serious with woodwork, make sure you've got a nice bucket of water next to your bench. Because by the time you run outside, get a rag, come back, you're losing valuable time. There we go. Okay, okay. Especially with that um, one I'm using there, this stuff on the back is actually almost dry. The overage stuff. And it's much easier to get it off when it's wet. I suppose not, well it is important, but not so much in this case, because that's going to be hidden by panels and the inside you won't see. Speaking of panels, we'll get the back panel up and work on it. Where's a dry rag? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remind me if I come to England, Andy, to look out for you. Either that, either that, or I'll ring you up and I will happily drive with you inside the car. Oh, Might, might have to get the router out in a minute.
Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, I know what I've got to do before I do this. I um, got an idea for UB boxes, so I want to try an experiment. So I'll do that now. I'm going to put two timbers together to make them. So I'll just put this over here and we'll put this in here. I'll have a look at that later on, see how it goes. This one here goes with that one there. I've got some wood turning to do, but I can't do that down here. Could we do that in the other shed? I'll just get this got a bit of glue here. This is the back board to that sound box that we just glued together. And I think that can be the outside. I was going to have the heartwood there, but I've changed my mind. So what I've got to do first is find out where I've got good wood and where I've got bad wood. Line this up with where the join is, if I've got any imperfections, like I've got a, a knot here, so I'm going to make sure that the sound hole will be cut out where that knot is, that way to eliminate that, Jeez, I'll tell you what, that's a good join, I can hardly see where the centre is, there we go, close enough. Now, I don't know, you know, let me draw these first. That's going to be the top. I don't know if you can see that fiddle back, but it's going up this way. So that's how I want it to be on the back of the harp. If I went that way, it just, I don't know, it loses a lot, whereas that way it's got nice figure and really shows it up. So I said I could have had this in the middle, which would have been nice, but with these sound holes, it would have cut a lot of that out. So I've marked that as the top. That's where the sound holes are that I've got to cut out. And this is the shape we have to draw. As soon as I find a light. Can go there, can go there. Like that. Can go 
there up a bit and pretty pretty darn close there I think <whistles> all right now that's lined up I'll draw the shape of the back that I want and this is oversize so I've got a little bit of sapwood here um, that's not too bad so now I've got a rough cut these ones out here which I will go and get a jigsaw and a hole saw oh. Now I could do these on the drill picks, but seeing it's a rough cut, it really doesn't make that much difference. And the only reason I'm doing a cut at all is because I'm um, an entry point for the jigsaw to go in. So I'll make sure I'm over there, don't go anywhere. Like it would be quicker on the drill press. Oh, I might just do that. I might just go and throw this in the drill press and do that. So you'll hear me, but you won't see me. Oh, I've already got a big one in there. Let's see. Yeah, that'll do. a lot quicker than messing around with them. so the reason I've cut those is because I've got to get the scroll saw in there not the scroll saw the jigsaw uh, which is here now I'm gonna have a rough cut there I um, I don't want to get too close to the edge because I'm actually gonna clean it up with a profile bit on the powder.
So that looks pretty ugly, but that's all right. It'll look good in a couple of minutes. Oh, double sided tape. And this is going to be on the back. The reason I'm putting this on the back is because I want to, first of all, I'll shape this. What thing on? Where are we? Come here. I'll shape this uh, using a profile cutter and then I want to round it over. So if I do it with the pattern on the back, then. Actually, I'll stuff that up. <laughs> nah. Oh, not, not, not big stuff up, just little stuff up. I should have marked this on the underside, so what I'm going to have to do is go back and do it this way. It's just one extra, one extra step. And if I wasn't streaming, I still would have made the same mistake. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Okay. Doesn't matter. So I said before, this double sided tape is just fantastic stuff. That's what it's called. Um, I used to get it up here, uh, but now I get it out of Melbourne. I'm going to try something different. Instead of moving a camera over there, what I will do... Oh, you didn't even see that, did you? I thought, I thought I was on a different camera. I'm sorry. There you go. That's what it's called. Um, I'm going to see if I... This camera I'm using here, number three, I'm going to see if I can actually swing it over so you can see the router table, that way I don't have to move cameras around and trip over leads and all that other disastrous stuff. Okay. So, that's there, that goes in there. That's looking pretty good. Can come over here a little. Okay. Normally I like to put that in the vice, but I don't think I'll be able to do it very successfully. But we'll try the front and back and see how we go. Oh, hang on, hang on. No, nah, not deep enough. Okay. I'll see if I can just spin this one around. So you can actually see the router table. Whoa, there you go, look at that. Awesome. Okay, we can do it. I don't know how many years I've been doing this and I've just, just realised what a terrific way to go. Okay, so let's go to the router table. I've got a, um, I hope, yep, a pattern profile bit in there. And, and I'm still looking for that harp. It's got to be here somewhere. There we go. All right. Uh, what? 
Got carried away there, I didn't adjust it. Let's adjust it. Now there looks pretty darn good. So I'm not cutting on the um, bearing at the moment. I'm just freehanding around to get a lot of that bulk out. Go up to the line. There, I have a really nice cut. Do this one next. because I put the template on the wrong side, I've got to take it off and put it on the other side so I can then put the round over bit on it. So it's only one extra step. And a few penneths, worth, you like that? A few penneths worth of tape. But these things you learn or remember next time in fact, I'll tell you what I'll do now. I will write it on here. Place on of back for profile and over. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. These are next time. <laughs> Point the wrong way, isn't it? There it is. So it's not even in focus. Oh, this 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 is meant to have a lot of focus, but it really doesn't. I think Telstra must have owned it before me. No, not going to. Anyway, I've written it on the back. I've written it on the back, so I will know next time what to do.
Uh, and as I've said many times, if you're using this stuff, get it off as quick as you can because it comes off pretty easy when it's new. It has been on there for a while. It takes a lot of hard rubbing to get it off. Go. All done, all clean. So now I've got to put this on the side and I will catch up with what's happening in the chat. Uh, I'm good on you. I, I suppose you can't get on to me about the the um, music stands anymore, so I suppose the round is fair game. Gary, good day from California. Well, good day from Steve in Brisbane, mate. Where are we up to? Good day, John. Where we get? Panda, good day. I've, I've been, I've been so rude, haven't I? Nathaniel, good day. Oh, okay, where are we up to? Last I remember, Ray went transitional. Oh no, Andy, Andy, ha! <laughs> Andy went with a, what was that, a white flag or a white cane? A white stick in front of his car, good on you. Okay, so now I've got to put these down there, so I need more of this. Louise, oh, listen, I got up, Louise. My, my veneer fairy, look what she bought over the other day. She is just an absolute star. I'll show you some of these colours. Uh, so I'm looking forward to when I can get back onto the bed, which is pretty soon after I finish these harps. Will do. But some of these colours, I don't know if they're... Do I now actually translate? Ah, see, that's a lot greener than it is. It's a real turquoisey colour. It's just absolutely amazing. Some nice gold. Black. See, that black's come up nice. I like that. That's a really nice... That's hoop pine, I'm guessing. Well, that, oh, that's nice. Really nice blues and purples. So there you go. Thank you once again, Louise. I'm looking forward to putting those into the hummingbirds. They are going to be extraordinary. Oh, so where do I get Louise? Louise. John, g'day. Andrew, g'day, mate. What? You, you're keeping an eye on the boss. <laughs> oh dear. Good night, John. See you, mate. Oh, thanks, John. Ye of little faith. It was only five years. It's taken longer than that. Speaking of times, I've got a friend I've got to ring in Western Australia and I was going to give him a call and then I realised, oh no, it's a bit too early. So when I finish streaming, I'll give him a call. Okay, so I've got to change router bits. That was a straight uh, profile cutter I had on there. What I'm going to use now is a round over with a bearing on it. So... I can 
get a nice little round over. Oh, I think that's thin enough. I don't want to go any thinner on the back. Well, just out of interest, I'll see what, how thin, oh, the back of this one is. See how thick that one is. Now that's five. Okay. Well, that's quite nice. I could serenade you, couldn't I? That's it, that's all I know. <laughs> oh! Oh dear. I don't think I'll give up my day job as a woodworker though. So that's, what did I say, that was five mil. And... That was five mil too. That, that was more good luck than good management, I'll tell you. Okay, so now I've got to put this one on. And then we can... Um, Go over and route that out. I still didn't catch up with all the chat, did I? I will, I promise. I'll tell you what, disaster nearly in our house. We nearly run out of Christmas cake. And she said, I forgot to make another one. Oh, she might have to. Oh, there's something special about Christmas cake. I don't know what it is, but oh. Might be the marzipan or the royal icing or I don't know. But it's nice. What have we got? Uh... <whistles> yeah, now this is um it's not cheap. Uh, well, it's not super expensive, but um, it's a sail makers tape, Vince. So the sail makers use it. I've just got some dags there, so I want to get rid of those. This will be the sandpaper to do that. Because if I've got dags there, what happens? The template doesn't sit flat. And rise up and, well, basically just ruin your day in a matter of a second. Okay. Now, <laughs> trouble is when it sticks, it sticks, baby. There you go. So, if you put the temp on the right side, which is the back side, you don't have that problem I just had then. And it cuts out on um, making mistakes. Linda, hello. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, listen, Lawrence, I'm with you. They did no faith whatsoever. It's only, I don't know how many years ago I used the router, got a very bad kickback and went, oh, and since it's just, hasn't it? It's just stuck. No, oh, no, Nathaniel, I'm, I'm very much one of these guys. Measure twice, cut three times. Pain is a good teacher. That's that's the problem today, isn't it? It's meant stupid. It's meant to hurt. But I 
we'll wrap them in cotton wool and put them in a corner and make sure there's bubble wrap there so they don't get offended or hurt or ache or fall over and learn anything. I tell you what, the more the pain, the better the lesson. True story. Ah, oh, you don't understand. You're old. You're with the dinosaurs, Granddad. Yeah, good on you. <clears throat> yeah, don't tell, don't tell her that, Andy. <laughs> yeah, and yet, all, all Louise wanted to do was hold me Stanley number one plus. So go on, get in there. You know, oh, no, I'm going to use it. But anyway, I, a fair exchange, a fair exchange, Louise. All right, let's go back over and I've got to change the route a bit on this. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll see if I can find the right one. Oh, oh. <laughs> I tell them what I did with that harp. It's starting to, starting to worry me now. Okay. Love this Jessen table. Got this um, from Greek Machinery at Richlands. It is a great bit of kit. Uh, and now. So hello to Alan and all the staff over at Gregory Machinery. And while I'm there, I better say good day to Simon and all the staff at Carbotech. And Bill and all the staff at Woodward. Machinery, uh, Woodwork Machinery Plus, and Bundy and all the people at uh, Matilda Timbers. I've oh, got so many people I really am thankful for for helping me on and do what I do. That's small, but I don't know if it's going to be is that even smaller. Ooh, that's even smaller. I've got another one of those. Indeed, um, I did it. Um, no, I think I think I might. Mm. Oh, what's that? Not too big. That one's a nice one. Oh dear. Okay. Well, I might use that one. In the case, I've got to change collets. It's a half inch collet. It's a quarter inch. <laughs> Whoop. Look at that, brand new, haven't used it. Which is unusual. Oh, hang on, here's one. Is that? There you go, there's one that I've actually have used, so I'll use that one. <laughs> you watch, I won't be able to find that half inch collet next. It'll be. Where's it gone? All right, let's find a bit of. Bit of, bit, 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 bit of wood. Got these scrap stuff over here. And we will see if we can get it set right. I don't know if I, I'll 
that profile or not. It's a bit, bit skinny. Give us a look. Give us a look, give us a look, give us a look. Oh, I've just got to... Try that other one I had. See if it's more like it. Is that one. All right, my mistake. So I'm making a lot of them today, aren't I? I don't like that profile. It's too skinny. I'll do a, do a long one so you can see it. I'd much prefer to have a smaller radius and do it and realise I don't like it and put a bigger radius over top rather than the other way around because it won't work. So I don't lose them. I mean, if I can lose the harp, I don't think what I could do with some spanners. Drop it down. Oh, take a test cut. That radius. If I can get in there, is that gonna focus? Yeah, that's a bigger radius, and that's a small one. That one's a small one. It's just too mean, I think, whereas that bigger one's a little bit more generous. Okay. Let's see. We'll give it a shot. Do a little bit of a cut first. Making sure it's not too deep. Nice. 
again, I'm just about half a mil off the bearing on that car. And now I'm going on to the bearing. That's it. Nice. If you go onto the bearing straight away, you can take a too deep a cut and it'll rip your grain, whereas just off is good. You'll hear the difference in the note when it's full back. happy with that too. Where are we up to? G'day John, how are you? John N. Nice to have you back in the classroom, or the classroom, workshop. Ah, oh. oh, there we go. Okay, get all this gunk off. Now some of you, some of you may be wondering why I used this template to cut those out, but I'm going to use this one to cut the shape. The reason is, apart from the fact this has got a little bit of a ding in it, which the ding will follow, this is MDF, and it isn't all that uh, precise. You get, if it gets wet, it swells, it does all sorts of things. You use it three or four times pairing will actually wear away at the MDF, so then you'll get a different uh, shape. Whereas this is five ply I've got here, um, and it's nice and solid, and I can get precision out of it. Uh, most of my templates that I use again and again are, are five ply. That's because I can trust them and they're not going to go anywhere. Here's a, whoop, here's a few here. That's the base. That's the veneer neck. That's a helicon neck. That's a um, pillar. And I do cut them from MDF, but as soon as I've done that, I use these, keep the MDF ones just in case one of those breaks, and then I've got a chance of getting one or two um, good templates off the MDF before it becomes useless. So I guess if, you, if you're going to be doing a lot of something, get an MDF template, then make the same template in plywood and keep that as your spare. And then make one that you can use. All right. So where'd that one go? Whoop. Here we go. Whoop, got a bit of glue on here.
There you go, and this is how you get the stuff off. Just rub it with your eye or thumb, sometimes finger will do. And it just rolls up on itself. But see if you can get it all off and don't leave little bits on there. Because other stuff will stick to it. And then if you're going to put a finish on it, and you've got gum there, well, that is a different story altogether. But again, not a good day all round. Um, okay, what I'll do here. Now I've got these, um, whatever you may call them, shapes, and they're round over. I can't really accurately put this on because it's going to have a different silhouette. You're going to have a shadow here and where the round over is, so I'm going to actually have to use the back, but that'll line up nicely on the back. So more tape. Not quite as um, important with this one because it's actually going to be cut over size and bring it to the right shape. I actually wait until it's been glued to the back of the frame and then you use the profile a bit on the side of the sound box to marry up the back. Okay. Put that over there like that. That over there. Everything's wonderful, everyone's happy. All lines up nicely. Pretty darn good. Clamp that down. I'll have a, I'll have a read now. Let me see what, what is going on. Where are we? Ah, uh, Bender came in. Okay. Uh, and spoil Steve with the video. You can't spoil me, Andy. <laughs> you can quite easily. Anyway, like, I haven't heard from Prunella for years, John. I, um, I've actually got her email address. I tell you what I will, I'll, I'll email her um, this afternoon when I'm back up in the office. Because she was good fun. Ah, I'll do that for you. Um. Oh, we got ours. I've got no, no as I said, got no one in the house today. Although, no, that's not true. Oh, Anthony back. Poor kid. We had to go and buy him a push bike the other day so he could get to wherever he's got to go. And he was meant to be doing a barista course today, I've been told. And so he's, he's an early riser, early afternoon. Um, we had to get him out of bed at 8.30, get him out the door by 20 past 9. And then he rode, I don't know, seven or eight kilometres, maybe, uh, on his new bike, only to get up there to find out they told him the wrong date for the course. So, needless to say, he wasn't impressed. And I'm sure, I'm sure if it gets analysed somewhere down the track, it would have been my fault. But it's all right, I've got broad shoulders, I can handle that. Hmm. You have an eye bothering you. Well, just close your eyes and I'll just talk to you, Panda. What, do you get something in it? Poked in the eye or something more serious or what? Well, I hope it gets better very soon. All right, let's go to the bandsaw. Knock my coffee over in the process. There we go. Let me 
grass off cuts. That's what I melt down and then making the plaques out of. This, this has really got me, this. Oh, look at that. The thing's staring at me. I just, I'm coming back here now. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. There you go. That's the Harlequin harp. And what I've done with that one is the, uh, you can see a little bit of the pattern there. It's all under the uh, paper, which I'll take off later. But I've got the Harlequin harp. This is on a piece of one and a half mil plywood. And then I've actually incised it or cut it in to the uh, pillar of the harp on both sides, so it'll go in and then, I'm not sure how this, yeah, okay, and this can fit nicely in there like that. So I'm pleased I found that, I'm starting to think I've lost the plot. Well, perhaps I have, don't know. All right, let's go over and cut this thing up. Ooh. I might put the dusty on, what do you reckon? I got a blunt blade in there too. So it's not gonna sound very nice when it's cutting. There we go. Cut on the outside of the jig. And these bits here I'm going to keep because they'll make nice little bits for boxes. Back over to the router. As soon as I change that around, there we go. And press that one. Actually, I'm going to use the other. I've got a, another router set up. I'm not sure what bits in there. Though. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll go back to this one. Make sure the blade's going to 
cut it okay. And here we go. Oh, that was a very I could eliminate that from happening this side. What I'm trying to do is not go off. What I'm trying to do is not go off the end here. But if I do, I risk what happens to that other bit. It's going to split. So I've taken it nearly to the end. Now I'm going to come on this corner, then I can come back. Woodworking, eh? Okay, what happened then, when I was running the route, I'm actually going uphill. You've heard me talking about planing, you've got to plane downhill. That's the direction of the grains going downhill. So this side, no dramas, because I was running from there to there, and it was but this side, I was running uphill and it had a little bit too much me down. The route a bit hooked underneath it and ripped that bit of timber out. So we've got to fix that. Where are we? Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. There you go. So these, <coughs> these two bits here, got ripped out from there. <laughs> see, you didn't see that, did you? So these two little bits of timber here got actually ripped out from there. So I'm going to glue those together and put them back in where it's meant to be. And we can live to fight another day. It's good when it flies off, if you can see where it went. And, and if you can put it back together. Let's see. All right. So that bit goes on there like that. And then that goes must go in there like, no, perhaps, okay, that went out there, that's got to go in here then. All right, and then that 
will go in there like that. And hopefully you won't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use simple glue if I've got any. Yep. Um, and I'm going to glue I'll do it in two stages. So I'll glue these two bits at the first and then when that's dry then I can glue it onto the side. So it'll be good. It'll be good. Corey, g'day from Texas. Well, g'day from Brisbane, Australia, Corey. Thanks for dropping in. Did you see the disaster? Oh, I love it when you people watch me mess up. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Super glue. Let's see if it's going to come here. Oh, there it is. Luckily, I've got some pencil on that side, so I'll see that. And I reckon we'll get away that it'll just look like a, a natural thing. Okay, a bit of masking tape. Make sure it's all nice and Right. But it's not working. These things happen, so it's no good getting cranky about it and throwing your hands up and throwing your job in the bin. I will hasten to add I have done that in the past, but with a few trips around the sun, you realise everything can be fixed. Now I'm going to leave that for about an hour. So I know it's totally dry and then I'll glue it onto there and tape it and we will be good to go. So let me just take this off here so that's a nice back for the harp now. Just take any of this tape off. And that, <clears throat> this should be dry now, I think. But this will then, when I decide to unclamp this, which will be another couple of hours, this will then go onto the back there like that. And as you can tell, actually I've got such a generous overhang I don't even think it's going to matter. No, that cannot, I'm not even going to worry about that. That is not going to matter because I've got so much overhang. I'm pretty happy with that. That's another reason, as many of you have seen with me in the past, I don't cut things to final size until I'm actually ready to put them together. And one reason is that that very occurrence where that happened, um, yeah, it's all right. I'm not worried about it. I won't glue that bit. I can put it in the bin. It was a good shot. Three points, nothing but net. But if it was important, that's how you'd fix it. Let's get all this tape off here. Boom, boom, boom. Now I've got some work to do on that other sound box, but I've been doing this for an hour and a bit, so I might call it quits and go and have a bit of lunch. What have we got? 
There you go. So that's it. I'll finish my coffee. Ah, well, I hope you got something from that. Oh, no, I did. I had company while I was working, which I thank you very much for. Uh, don't know, I might do another one tomorrow. We'll see how we go. At least I found, I've lost it again. I found me Harlequin. I, I was worried about that because I didn't know. I'm really looking forward to sanding off that paper and, and seeing the, the colour underneath. But I've got a lot of work to do before I can do that. And there you go, a bit of veneers just come off there, so I'm going to have to fix that. Really, woodworking, it's nothing but problem solving. That's all you're doing, solving problems. And trying not to lose your temper. <sighs> and things will work out. So that's it. This is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp. More importantly, keep it safe, look after yourself, be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop, at a workbench, very, very soon. Uh, thank you for your company, thank you for your input, thank you for your support, and the mods out there, thank you. And yeah, John, I'll, I'll see if I can get on to Prunella, it'd be lovely to catch up with her again. So in the meantime, that's it. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. I'll catch you all later on. God bless, bye for now. Do-do-do-do.